Yeah, this is something we started some years ago, and it just kind of grew. In fact, it's been growing up until a couple of hours ago. Yes, yeah, so this is a lot of pictures that we've accumulated. It's not the end all collection of photos from South Jersey, but hopefully this will give you uh, an idea of some uh, some of the what the railroads did to develop our part of the state. And uh, so we'll just start here. But uh, railroads have played a big part in establishing uh, communities in South Jersey. It's programmed in some of the facilities that uh, railroads built in our communities, and there's there's quite a few of them. It's just a brief list. I'm not going to stay here too long, but a list of a lot of the contributors uh, where where we collected our pictures from, and uh, notably, I guess a couple of Famous ones are Bob Long, uh, Walt Shop, a couple other people on here, Rob Farrell, some members, and uh, we have a nice collection of pictures, we think. But there's a lot more that uh, aren't here. So basically a brief map of uh, South Jersey Railroad, starting with Camden and going all the way out to Lake Bayhead and the shore. Coming down to Atlantic City, down to Cape May, over to Bivalve even, Quinton, uh, Salem area. So railroads were quite extensive in this area. And different, a lot of different companies, uh, West Jersey and Seashore, Atlantic City Railroad, uh, Central Railroad in New Jersey, the Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Lines, Pennsylvania Railroad, Reading Railroad. So if you're ready, we'll start looking at some pictures. But first, uh, we hope you, uh, did you get it? I hope everybody got their tickets. Some of you might remember these machines from uh, early Patco, but I uh, hope everybody's got their ticket. So I got a 40 cent ticket. They only bought the 40 cent one. And because uh, the conductor is giving us a signal that it's time to leave the station and get traveling around South Jersey. So here we go. We're going to start in Absecon. Pleasantville, uh, the station is still there along the Atlantic City line. The building has changed uh, quite a bit since then, but uh, starting in Absecon. The reason is these are alphabetical from A to Z. You move to uh, Alloway Junction. So the Quinton branch was on your left and the uh, Salem branch was on your right. Don't have a year on this, but uh, around Alloway. And Cora, uh, this is a valuation picture believe from uh, station was completed in 1900 at a cost of uh, twelve hundred seventy seven dollars and ten cents um, you see uh, building materials were cheaper then then this uh, picture of a locomotive picking up water on track pans as the uh, locomotive was going to head through the track pans pick up water uh, while they were moving and the track pans were uh, I believe heated for the uh, winter months Ashland which is now a uh, Patco stop is a shelter it was at Patco uh, 1962 At go on today's Atlantic City line. One shot of that, see the Inquirer box there and some boxes back here on the, on the step. This is uh, around 1962. Yeah, their historical society hopes to build a replica.
the Atlantic City Union Station. Quite a history and Brian, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Well, they built this after the merger in 1933, because they had the Reading and the uh, Fenton lines, otherwise known as West Jersey and Seashore and the Atlantic City Railroad. And when they merged in 33, they built this uh, pretty nice uh, combined station. And the uh, Blue Comet used to run into here too. Speaking of the Blue Comet in Atlantic City. Well, there she is. Uh, 1962, a picture of the uh, round table and engine house that was uh, that was there. A water shop photo from uh, I'm not sure, but probably in the 60s. A few of Walter's pictures will be through this presentation. The uh, Bill Vigrass photo from 1967. I believe this was the new, newer station in the background. Yeah, that was the... Uh slapped together station they built. Okay. Year before, same same area. Just wanted you to see some uh, pictures that had trains in them too. At sign back off of Route 206. Blue Comet also ran down these uh, tracks from the Central Railway of New Jersey. And another shot, uh, 1947. Some of the tracks are still there. Nothing runs there anymore. Audubon. Couple from here uh, from the Bob Long collection. This is a, a Reading engine, Reading locomotive coming along, headed towards Camden. This is a look in 1961. Uh, station still there is a dentist's office. Later in the program, you'll see uh, pictures of a walkover bridge, which I was told today. Uh, was built by the railroad. The uh, walkover bridge in Audubon is gone, but the one in Haddon Heights, you'll see later, is still there. Aura. Barnegat Pier, which burned, I believe, in the 19, sometime in the 1940s, but that took trains. Some trains went from Camden uh, out here through Moorestown, where I lived, out to uh, Bayhead, across the Barnegat Pier. Just a couple shots of the pier. Barnegat City. Back to uh, Barrington, shot from uh, 1941. Clements Bridge Road. And a little later on, when you just see uh, the detestation shelter there, uh, 20 years later.
Now this is West Berlin, but I put it here because it's before Berlin. Uh, so we just stuck this in there and uh, this photo I just saw for the first time a couple weeks ago, but it was just before you got to Berlin on the Atlantic City line, I guess. They go into Berlin. The building still there, part of the uh, longer coming historical society museum. Shot from the other side. The Atlantic City line still runs on this side from uh, Philadelphia to Atlantic City. Beverly up along uh, Route 130. Again, the uh, river line runs runs in that area now. Birmingham, which is uh, out between uh, before you get to Pemberton uh, on the back road, uh, when from Moorestown, Haynesport, Smithville, Pemberton. Uh, there was a, and this building still exists on uh, the property of Jeffrey Nixon. Jeff uh, Jeff restored it. And it's on his property. And this was prior to uh, I guess just taking it to Jeff's property. And the uh, BR Tower pass in Birmingham. Trains went, I guess, to Pemberton or South Pemberton. VR Tower. So this is uh, almost out towards uh, Pemberton. Blackwood Freight Station uh, from 1916. Picture of it, uh, 1962. That's a different building. That's the passenger station. Okay. But at that point in time, it had become the freight station. That station still stands, by the way, yet down at the old Stonehouse Village. Correct. It was moved. Bordentown. The river line still runs up along back here to, from Camden to Trenton. This was your uh, Camden and Amboy branch. And here's a shot of that from uh, 1961. So the Riverline Station now is just up past this curve. Going to Trenton. Bridgeport Movable Bridge. Bridgeton, 1910. Look at all the uh, horse and buggy, horse and carriages in this picture. With a vintage picture of Bridgeton. Burlington, which the river line still runs along here. The Burlington station is uh, obviously long gone, but uh, the river line still runs there, and there's a stop right in that vicinity. I think that horse is still there. Uh, another water shop photo. Uh, building on the left still exists, and right behind where the trains are is currently where the uh, river line stop is from Burlington City. And these trains run right down the middle of the street. 
Uh, this building still exists in Burlington now. It's a, uh, I believe it's a railroad or Riverline Police Police Department. And the crossing right behind it is the uh, where you go across to go over the uh, Burlington Bristol Bridge. But that building is still there. MJ Tower, this was in Burlington. It's no longer there. Nor is this uh, freight house back, back here. Going to spend a little time in Camden. This is the uh, when the Reading had their own terminal, and the Pennsylvania Railroad had their own terminal. This is a shot of the uh, Reading Terminal and ferries from 1924. Gaines Point Terminal. Pennsylvania Railroad was a little further up towards where the Ben Franklin Bridge is now and the uh, they had trains and ferries coming over the, from Philadelphia also. Some of the uh, Camden Yard, uh, which is now where the uh, aquarium is and the uh, entertainment center and other office buildings that are down by the river. It's a calling tower. Coming out to Broadway. That's old Broadway now. Sorry? That's the old Broadway station. Correct. And there's looking underneath from street level, looking up at the uh, track and station level. Obviously, uh, years later, 1955. Yeah, that's New Broadway. With a doodle bug. Yep. New Broadway Terminal. That RDC would go to uh, Millville. Now we're out of the uh, Cooper River Bridge looking towards Pavonia Yard. That's all, old Cooper Tower at River Road there on the left. That's a uh, shot looking in the other direction. The thing hanging down is what they call a smashboard. When you absolutely positively have to stop and can't say you didn't because you would smash through it. River line runs along there today as does freight. And you can see uh, Camden City Hall over here on your right. And back over the uh, Camden engine terminal. Allen Tower, which I believe the speed line runs near now. No, Al Allen Tower controlled the uh, throat to the uh, Camden engine terminal. Okay. Uh, bridge line train, which uh, is in a Broadway station when it was moved underground or the underground portion. Some of those cars, I think, are still down at Patco and Lindenwald. Broadway uh, Terminal in 1983. Yeah, see, the, the Chinese wall is missing on the left. The track was on the left and elevated for the railroad. Uh, Pavonia Yard in Camden, the Hump Yard Tower, where the uh, 
switch trains and over the hump to divide them up to go into other trains to other destinations that that uh that's been that's no longer there uh trains past pemberton also went to fort dix which used to be camp dix that's just one image we have of that uh but also a lot of troop trains ran out of Fort Dix uh, during during uh, wars and conflicts. Going out of Cape May, Cape May Courthouse. That's the Reddings, uh, Cape May Courthouse. Canal Bridge, which uh, many of you might be familiar with, uh, the canal was put in during uh, World War II, and uh, various couple of between the auto bridge and the uh, train bridge, obviously for trains and cars, but were put in at that time. The uh, one shot of the. Uh, on the Cape May stations when it was closer to the uh, yeah, I mean, where the Acme Park Acme parking lot is now. Now the station is further off to your right. Right. But that is one from uh, 1952. Cardiff. 1941. Or he'll kind of in sad shape. Corson's Inlet. Well, the card though it's spelled Carson's Inlet, but it's uh, Corson's Inlet. Yeah, that was an excursion. They used to run a lot of excursions down there where you could spend the day. Cedar Brook, nineteen forty one Chatsworth, which is uh where the blue comet on the Jersey Central ran by it and the station still there now it's a uh or a couple of years ago it was a double it was a sub Divided private residence or two. Uh, that that was it a few years ago, and two families lived there. The cave, I think, it also was moved from its original position. More what? So that, I believe it was moved from its original location. Okay. A little further over somewhere. Okay. Clayton. Another shot from 1941. Freight station, station and shelter. Clementon, this is a uh, Bob Long photo. I think that's one of his children. Clementon, the stations to your uh, left. Put this one in. I just like the uh, night night scene of the uh, station. In Collingswood, where I I grew up, about a block and a half from here, and never really realized this was here until I was. They started tearing it apart on uh, Collings Avenue, right off of Collings Avenue. And before, if you look here, you can see a house. You still see a water tower, but there was a house of some kind then, but very shortly between the borough garages and the former police department uh, was there at Collings Avenue. And it double tracked. And then the, uh, you can see the coal towers in the background, which was from uh, 
A.T. Siemens, which was later uh, Peter Lumber. Ropwell. Ron, do you want to uh, talk about that? Uh, that, was, that was out in the uh, Marlton area where, uh, about where the McDonald's is on Route 70 at Cropwell Road. That was on the uh, Medford branch. Pulled off in Marlton and Medford. Del Air, uh, right now, to point to my word to our back, is where the new Pensacola Transportation Center is, but this was in Del Air. In Pensacola. And Jersey Tower was uh, the tower when you came off this side of the Delaware Bridge. Shot of a uh, GG1. You'll yeah. never see that again. Either coming out of or going into. Uh, that was a Conrail train coming out of Pavonia Yard heading across the bridge. Uh, I got lucky one day. Now the uh, overhead wire is no longer there. The GG ones are just a memory. Del Air Bridge, when it used to be, uh, when it was a spin, now it goes, if you see it, it goes up and down to allow ships to pass underneath there. It's built by the Pennsylvania Railroad. A uh, couple shots riding on, riding in the uh, rear of the New Jersey Transit train to Philadelphia, going over the Del Air Bridge. Now we're on the Philadelphia side. Delanco, another current river line stop. It was enough to get the two or three passengers out of the weather. Okay. Uh, Dennisville. Yeah, the, the uh, structure still is standing down on uh, off of Route 9, a uh, place called uh, Smithville, uh, just outside of Absecon. Have South Dennis. Back up to Edgewater Park, back up along the uh, river line, which is currently the river line today, the original Camden Amboy Railroad. Egg Harbor City. Now the Atlantic City line runs down there. Yeah, Egg Harbor was first uh, founded and called Germania because it was Germans that founded it. Elmer. Well, the cool thing about that is is the camp train park here. In the old days, uh, track workers would live in this camp train and uh, they'd park it near a station. Uh, guys would work on the track all day and then they'd come back and eat and sleep in there. Then Elwood. Sheltered Elwood. Elwood found a white horse pike. Used to be when you were there, you're nowhere. Now, when you're there, it's all shopping center. Ewensville, which is uh, east of uh, 
Route 206 here on the back road. Uh, first station, I don't know if it's the first station, but it was 19, 1900. And then a uh, concrete shelter was built here, which is the next next picture. The last I saw of this a few years ago, it was a uh, garden shed in somebody's backyard. Still. Yeah, it's a, it's a one piece casting, uh, concrete yeah. casting. Still there. Florence, uh, just another shot of the, what's on the river line today. Not a great shot, but it showed it was there. Franklinville. Say we're hopscotching all over the place. I hope you're bearing with us. Yeah, the interesting thing about it is it still stands. Uh, it's been moved twice, uh, and uh, the arrow is pointing at the third rail. Uh, that line was uh, energized with a third rail for the electric uh, service that ran from Camden to Millville and uh, eventually ran from Camden to Atlantic City. Gibbstown. So there's still, still a lot of railroad freight that runs down that direction. Somebody uh, hit the cross buck, I guess, with a truck or a car and knocked part of it off. Every picture I've ever seen of that building has that broken cross buck. Glassboro, and the Bridgeton branch and uh, Millville branch uh, in an interesting station where Rowan Glassboro College and Rowan University is now. Another uh, water shop photo. This building has been uh, restored. A weird looking building, but it's been beautifully restored. Yeah. <coughs> Shelter at South Glassboro. Back to Glendora. The Grenlock branch. Yeah, that's a Francis Palmer photo, and there's a, there's a car back there. There's an automobile and a passenger car. We don't know anything about them. This is 1933. Gloucester, where uh, Ron's from. Then you can see the uh, Station and the shelter, and also the Walt Whitman Bridge in the background looking towards Camden. It's got that new bridge smell to it. Uh, well, 1969, it was built in 1956, the bridge. At one time, there was another track down the middle. Shelter on the northbound side. Goshen again down towards uh, on the way to Wild. Oh, that's Wood. the next one below South Dennis. Grenlock. Yeah, okay, Grenlock's interesting story. It had uh, it originally was a house, and the railroad bought it and moved it and uh, then when they were done with it they sold it and it went back to being a house again and uh, it was only torn down in the last 10 years now had heights i took this picture about a week ago this isn't the act you'll see the actual color different picture i don't know i mess messed around with the color but uh 
It's the walking bridge that's still there across the railroad in Hand Heights. And uh, Rich McGee told me there was another one in Audubon that they took down. So, uh, but I went down and took some pictures a couple weeks ago and uh, took a walk up across the thing. It's still there. The concrete's a little shaky, but uh, pretty st pretty sturdy yet. But this well, is a, this is a couple blocks from the uh, Hatton Heights station. At one time, the the Reading had three tracks through there, and the middle track was an express track, and they went pretty fast. So uh, it was worth your life to try and cross the tracks. So I'd like to go. I'd like that. to go back and uh, on the other side look for the. Uh, you'll see in some future pictures on this series. Look for the diamond with the uh, build build date from the Reading Railroad. The Haddon Heights Station, many many years ago. That's Bob Carberly right there in a picture. Here's the station. So here we're looking towards. Uh, we're looking towards Audubon, West Collingswood, Camden. And there was the shot that was in the uh, explanation slide. The freight station is still there. And uh, the station, as I said, is uh, being renovated by the Delaware and Susquehanna Model Railroad Club. Periodically, you can go in and have a look around. That was it. 2014. I'm going to switch over to Haddonfield. Some different photos here. You see the walk under to the other side of the tracks here. Before my time, the uh, West Jersey chapter had meetings in this building. It's a photo of the uh, inside of the station. Kings Highway, one of the uh, signal signal operators. I don't know if that was their proper job name, but I think he was a crossing watchman. But uh, that's right on Kings Highway. You see the gas station back here. Signs and signals, all oh, that's underground now. Night shot, it's one of them one of Bob Long's photos. Yeah, I think the note said that was the last train. Like last run. FX Tower, uh later named Vernon in, in uh West Haddonfield. Yeah, if you're if you look between the station and the tower or actually anywhere back there, that's Westmont. Uh, what's his name? The, uh, I'm losing it. Haddon Avenue is just to the right. Just an example of some of the uh, railroad equipment that used to run run along these lines too. Hmm. Back to the station in Haddonfield.
uh, crossing Kings Highway, Haddonfield. Construction of the speed line station at Haddonfield with the trench for the uh, trains to Atlantic City. The Atlantic City trains are, are deeper and wider because uh, uh, FRA regulations, they heavy freight trains have different uh, clearance uh, devices than they do for the speed line. The uh, favorite, favorite that I saw from uh, John, friend of ours, John Danielson, happened to get the shot of a uh, Atlantic City train on the uh, left of Philadelphia and a uh, train to London Wall on the right. That's a nice example of what goes on there. And that was a photo from a few years ago, just I was driving by, stuck my cell phone out the window and took that image. So now we're back out on the back road, which that's what this line is between uh, Camden and Pemberton. So uh, this is Haynesport. Then we jump all the way back down to Hamilton. It's right around uh, the Main Street and uh, I guess it's Route 54. Hartford out also out here on the back road between Moorestown and Masonville and Haynesport and Mount Holly. This is the last Hartford, I guess, was the shelter. And right, be, uh, right up here is uh, 295 in the uh, New Jersey Turnpike, and this is uh, Marne Highway. Which takes you out to uh, Mount Holly and beyond. I bet that's just the Turnpike. 1962, I don't think 295 was there. Well, the interesting thing, there's plates, which someone pointed out to me under... 295 and a turnpike? Yeah, smoke deflector. Right. But this is all grown up and built in now. Uh, Iona, down near Franklinville. You can see some of the ornamental woodworking that went into some of these stations. Concora up near uh, if you here there's sometimes the Concora branch up near Roebling. Yeah, the Concora branch was actually an ordinate way out of Fort Dix. If troops were going north towards New York, they could come out the Concora branch and uh, head up to New York. In 1961. Kirkwood, which is uh, down near, just right near Lindenwald, famous uh, Bob Long photo. Landisville, down in Vineland area. Yeah, I think it was hit with a truck uh, right off of uh, Route 40. And it shipped out many, many truckloads or carloads of vegetables. Uh, 
Laurel Springs. And the Clement Branch. Yeah, the one they have there today is a reproduction. It's another shot of it, 1961. See some of the track torn up. Yeah, at one time there were two tracks there up until 1956. Lawn side. We would they, uh, a privy. Lindenwald. Interesting to see what was compared to what's there now. Artist rendering of, uh, I guess, what they thought would be in Lindenwald at one point. The uh, where the Atlantic City trains run now, down on the side of the uh, Patco is up on the top, and Atlantic City line is down on the on the lower side. And there's a shot of uh, Don Wenzel picture from 1981, and the Lindenwald shops are off to your right. Lucaston. Bob Long photo. Magnolia. 1925. Yeah, the track in the street there is the, the trolley line that went from uh, Camden down to Clementine. I believe that's Evesham Avenue. Maybe your Sinclair Station on the uh, on the left. Malaga. Note the water pump, the hand activated water pump. Most all these stations had them when they were built. Manahawkin. Maple Shade before it was uh, expanded to, they just added on to the station. And there's a shot of the expanded station and uh, the main line is out to your right, and there was, used to be a lumber yard back into your left. There's a Walt, another Walt shop photo. Masonville, just now, I guess you could call, say, still called Masonville, but part of Mount Laurel in a way, on the back road. Subsequently, this is Marn Highway, and this was a shelter. Morristown, down near the Delaware Bay. Yeah, that station still stands as a private residence out on the Delsa Drive, just below the Wawa. Mays Landing, and this station still still there. Is still there. The plywood window. Medford didn't have too much of uh, Medford, but this was one shot we had of Medford after they were tearing things up.
Merchantville, which is still there. Station is still there. We're at the coffee shop today. Yeah. But looking towards Camden. And this looks towards uh, Mount Holly and freight stations there. Remember, there's a parking lot now. There's some freight cars there. This is a uh, Wilcoxy photo from uh, 1969. Signal still there, some for signal. West Merchantville, which is closer to, uh, I believe this is Browning Road, the same train line. Uh, Pensacola, and this is actually uh, Park Avenue in Pensacola, and it's Jordan, and uh, trains still run through there to go to Atlantic City, and on this uh, switch here, is where it goes off, this is where trains come out through uh, Maple Shade, Morristown to uh, Haynesport with freight. Millville Station. Yeah, I'm going. Uh, Nineteen sixty three Jim Leslie photo. Uh, Swift Tower in uh, Millville, another one of the Walt Shops photos. And you see this uh, vintage car sitting here on the right. Nineteen sixty seven. Ms. Pop uh, near Hamilton. Uh, Ron, you want to talk about? Ms. Pa for a second. It was a, it was a little a Jewish community, part of uh, Hamilton Township, and they had a factory there, and they made what did I tell you? They made cloaks. I guess that's what you were supposed to hang up in the cloak room, where my teacher always sent me at the Brown Street School. They always said go to the cloak room, but the building was actually. Uh, you can see on the end it says for sale. And some farmer bought it and put it on the property, and it was still uh, standing up until about four years ago. And uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, take photos and measurements of it, so someday I'll build a model of it. Thank you. Morristown, uh, this is uh, a lot of pictures for, from Jim Leslie. Yeah, this guy yeah, Jim always smile. had Jim always had this photo to start all his uh, pro a lot of his programs and kind of put this into uh, kind of a little tribute to Jim. But uh, always thought how unhappy this gentleman looked with all these kids kind of hanging around behind him out here. They were probably his. His kids were trying to drive him crazy. Probably one of them might have been Jim. Um, <laughs> This is uh, Linola, which was a stop. Morristown had uh, I think four stops. Buildings still exist on Church Street, except that they've added on to one side of it. Uh, as you can see, uh, Freight Station was still just behind it. That's now where the Borough Hall and the library is. Uh, Chester Avenue, which now this station has been moved back and is now a uh, dentist office. It's a Bill Vigrass photo from 1968. Also, to note, this building down here was Hollingshead's Building Supplies 
coal oil whatnot and there was uh there was sidings into Hollingsheads. Now that's a uh residential property or residential properties, I should say, is remediated and cleaned up and now it's houses. Dave, you should mention why that car has those stripes. Why what? Why that car has those stripes. Um, don't know. Oh, well. It was the push pull, wasn't it? It was a push pull. And uh, that train would go to Pemberton and then they would run it back into Camden. And those stripes were a high visibility thing and they got headlights on the top too. But I understand they did not carry passengers on that operation because uh, the conductor would ride in the back uh, looking out the window, but he had nothing but an air brake. He could, he could throw the brakes in emergency, but he couldn't control the speed of the train or anything. Well, I assume he had a horn up there too. You might see something along this lines when we get to Pensacola. Uh, it's after the station and in between iterations of it, just a Conrail locomotive heading towards uh, Mount Holly. Stanwick Avenue, which now it's, uh, it's a road I live on, it's called Stanwick Road. Now this is uh, Stanwick Avenue when it was a section house for maintenance. That was before when it was a uh, station. And just another shot of it. Now all that's left is the base of it. And not much is left of that, just some concrete. Martin Highway, I took this, uh, pulled this picture out. This is gone. They took this out, Martin, uh, coming through Moorestown to Martin Highway. Uh, this was used to be called, referred to in Moorestown as Dead Man's Curve. I took, took, took that out and replaced it with a grade crossing. But if you're familiar with Moorestown, right behind where the train is and where Top Golf is and Costco and Target and Wegmans is right all in there now. Now we're at the Mount Holly freight station. All this has just been torn up for good out here at the uh, freight yard just recently. It's Mount Holly Station, which is now a uh, microbrewery. You can see where some train cars in the back. So it used to go to uh, Burlington. So the one of uh, Walter Shop's photos from 1962. Further on, one of Jim's pictures from 1982. New Egypt, which was the uh, Union Transportation Company. Union Transportation Company used the, the last running Pennsylvania Railroad steam locomotive. New Lisbon. Out in the Pine Barrens. Newfield down the uh, before Milan. Malaga area. Newfield was a junction where uh, the two electric lines uh, 
ran off the left towards Atlantic City. Northfield, down between Linwood and uh, Pleasantville. Yeah, that was a station stop on the short fast line, which was actually a trolley line. Some of those little shelters, not like this, but there's some smaller shelters that are still there. Oakland, uh, now the, uh, was the Oakland swim swim club, but I don't know the status of that at the moment. It's, it's in limbo, but you can see where the second track was. So this is about 1956-57 when they tore up the other track. I just, uh, as I say, took these a couple of weeks ago, uh, West Clinton Avenue, the, the uh, bridge by the Manor Bar, and uh, White Horse Pike is if you went under here and up and going another couple of blocks. But the interesting thing about uh, what the Reading built, Reading Railroad that is, they would put some diamonds, Reading diamonds in there, and they would... Uh, Put their build date on it. So that bridge is from uh, 1924. Now this is uh, at the corner of West Cedar Avenue and Manor Avenue in Oakland. The other side, I believe, is Atlantic Avenue. But this is uh, the former walk under, where it's also known as sometimes people would call them a subway underneath the tracks and uh, the retaining walls are still there and uh, but the, the underground walkway is uh, gone and uh, one of my high school friends told me that it was easier to walk across the tracks than under the tracks this day this is this side happens to be a memorial garden to somebody now I'm also told uh, there's one of these in uh, Haddon Heights, so I'll have to go looking for it. There's the uh, build date of that was uh, 1925. Down to Ocean City, the Crookhorn Bridge. Look into Ocean City. Uh, 10th Street Station, I believe that's still there is a uh, bus station. Then we have the uh, gardens a little further up. Worston, uh, now some people, I don't know if you know where Worston is, that's between uh, Audubon and Haddon Heights. Along Atlantic Avenue. There's a shot of it years later. Osage, down along between, uh, I guess, around Kirkwood, Ashland, and uh, Lindenwald. Yeah. Near where the uh, Echelon Mall used to be. Palermo. I believe that building is at the Smithville Village on Route 9, maybe? I don't know what happened to that building. Okay. But Route 9 is just to the back of the photographer. Pat 
Elmira River line runs now. Freight station, it was there. I guess this bridge goes over 73 if I'm looking correctly. Back down to Paulsboro, we moved by the movable bridge with the smash board, the freight station. Yeah, none of that's there anymore. Photo I took, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago in Paulsboro. Don't stand on the tracks like I was. No, stay out of the gate. <clears throat> uh, Pedrick Town. Down on the, uh, down near deep water. Bridgeport area. That was a very busy station at one time. Many, many carloads of uh, vegetables came out of there. North Pemberton, which is uh, still there, has had some uh, iterations uh, and some redone people in, people out, and uh, but that's still the building is still there. I don't know what'll ever happen to it. If you went straight straight along here, you go into Fort Dix. And it's a uh Pemberton shop. We're looking in the same direction towards uh Fort Dix. And there was South Pemberton where the tracks went off, and uh, that building is no longer there. However, uh, remember Bob Gerber, courtesy of his father-in-law, has the uh, chalkboard from the South Pemberton station in his house. It's always a nice piece to see. Penn's Grove. That work train again. Some camp cars behind. Now we're in uh, Pensacon. Uh, so this train is coming from Camden out the back road towards uh, Morristown, Maple Shade, and Morristown. The interesting thing is the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad spelled Pensacon with two N's instead of three. So uh, that's uh, pointed out to me. This picture is from uh, one of Frank Zempel's pictures. The uh, engine is a, uh, you can't really tell here from this image, you know, I had a hard time scanning, but a red engine. But that's, uh, that was the Pensalkin station with two, two ends on the back road. There's a few more shots of that. Here's the tracks that goes over to Park Avenue. And this is the tracks that went back to Camden that way. Semi four signals. And this is looking uh, towards Maple Shade. Now, remember Ron talking about the uh, train with the high profile stripes? There's one coming uh, in the direction of uh, Maple Shade by the Pensalkin station in the push pull mode. Signals also changed the position lights. Uh, 
not really South Jersey, but uh, on Pat Cohen and Ben Franklin Bridge prior to the explosion of uh, high-rise buildings in Center City, Philadelphia. This is a Delaware River Port Authority uh, publicity photo. Pine Valley behind Pine uh, Hill where the uh, exclusive uh, golf course is. Richland, uh, the old station. Yeah, that's the original Richland. The Richland one that's there station. now uh, was a repro. So for Route 40. Riverside, along the where the river line runs. A postcard, obviously. Yeah, but <clears throat> I'll bring your attention to the side of the building. It says KI on there. Mm -hmm. That is their telegraph call signals. Uh, I mean, you, you, it's river, what is it, Riverside? Uh, there's only so many stations that begin with R. Uh, so they would go down the list of uh, telegraph uh, codes and they give them the uh, different names like that. So uh, you'd see all kind of weird letters on stations that the uh, tower we have down in the Richland says WI and the mayor used to call it we which is not it's a game I understand but uh, WI was was uh, for uh, where it came from over there at, at uh, Newfield that was the telegraph symbols there's a uh... The watch case factory this right across uh the street here is where the current riverside uh, station is for the river line and this is now a uh, a hospital thrift shop and this uh this canopy is gone there's the back backside photo with the uh, watch case factory on the tracks as I say it's a hospital thrift store now and that might that might be one of the newest cars in this presentation back to River 10 and back towards Camden down the line and a little further back, just from this station, this way is where the uh, River Line station is for the for Riverton. Yeah, Riverton Freight Station from the early nineteen sixties. Runnymede. Down on the Grenlock branch. Sailing from nineteen sixty two. Took this photo in two thousand eighteen. Um, this part of the building, the light side, is, is was still there at the time. I haven't been down there lately, but the back was going to uh, burn. Yeah, they had a little fire. Yeah, but this was uh, the remaining portion. This was... Uh, they lost a locomotive in that fire, too. Yeah, three years, about three years ago. So... And uh, the interesting thing, uh, it's 1962, it was boarded up then. 
get a box car was on a siding. And this part back here is uh, gone, back portion. The siding's gone too. So this was uh, taken just this past March. Same spot. So I'm not sure what's uh, what's going on with the station. They're relatively very clean dumpster out in the back back side. Smithville now. Uh, this is the Smithfield. It's out off of Route 38 here in Burlington County, uh, the factory complex of uh, Hezekiah Smith. Uh, one of the things they built there was the uh, high wheel bicycle. I mean, you can still tour the Smithville Mansion and some of the houses. It's a nice park to walk around. But these, this is all gone. But uh, these are some of the buildings that were there in in that era. Uh, and going out further past there to Pemberton and Fort Dix. And there again is another telegraph uh, marking. This one I like in the other direction because you can see one of the buildings still that was still standing at the time in 1962. Stratford didn't have a lot to Stratford. I guess that's it. Shelter in Stratford. Night shot in Stratford coming the other way. Swedesboro. Nineteen sixty two. Again, you can see some of the stations were sort of plain, but some of the stations like this one had very ornate woodworking on them. Trenton, which is uh, still there with high level platforms, nineteen fifty two. Tuckahoe, uh, so Tuckahoe Tower, which is still there and has been restored a couple of times, and you'll see a photo uh, more of that. This is where uh, Cape May Seashore Lines has their equipment and runs excursions from. Rumor has it there's going to be one Saturday. I'm sorry? Rumor has it there's going to be a trip Saturday. Yeah. This is the, the Wizards Expresses this Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so this is looking north. Yeah. It's hard to, hard to tell anymore. If you look today, it's all trees and brush. Picture with the freight station still there. Freight station long gone. And a, and a truck back then do it and helped it fall down. And this picture was just sent from uh, Steve Sardo. Steve's on the call with us tonight. Steve did some uh, painting and restoration work on the, on the uh, tower. 
and I thought I'd share to show what it looks like today and that's one of the uh, Seashore Lines engines on the uh, next to it so uh, it's very nice very nice shot Steve so thank you for uh, sending that over yeah he did a nice job painting so now we're at the Tucker Tin out of, out of Route 9 so the Tucker and Railroad is uh, 1909 Final in Atlantis Avenue. There's a CNJ and a PRSO crossed. And uh, this photo was taken in 1941 by uh, Mr. Mr. Don Wenzel, photographer extraordinaire. Amen. Uh, the Wheat Road uh, Vineland. Freight station. Another contributor, uh, Scott Barnes, just sent us this picture recently of a uh, train crossing uh, Mantua Creek in the Winona vicinity. So mm -hmm. thank you for that, Scott. Another photo that uh, Scott shared to be here for the Winona Historical Society from uh, 1909. That's one of the electric powered trains using the third rail. Still. Shot of Winona with their walkover bridge. And then uh, took these pictures in uh, March just to show what it looks like today. Now we're back to West Collingswood. We're almost to the end. Uh, this building is still there. It's a Haddon Township Extension uh, community building. But this is right off of Collings Avenue and uh, West Collings. Would, and this, but this is all, all gone, obviously. Freight still runs through here. And it's looking towards Camden. That's Collings Avenue right there, but that's uh, part of the West Collings would building set up. Back out to West Haddonfield. I should have put these up with the other West Haddonfield, but uh, nineteen sixty-two. There was a off of Haddon Avenue back here. There was a uh, Ford dealership. I can't remember whose it was. Fix or repair daily. Yeah, they had already taken the switch out in preparation to build the speed line. Now in the west mine at the uh, Cuthbert shelter, Cuthbert Road. Yeah, today the speed line runs there about 20 feet higher. There's a Crystal Lake Avenue, which is right on, on this side, behind us, which is where the uh, current Patco station is for Westmont. It's another walled shop photo uh, where the trains Train still, trains still run along there from uh, the Atlantic City line. That's Haddon Avenue up here going into Haddon Field. And uh, behind his back is Westmont, but the trains still run up to Cherry Hill 
and through Pensacola and over to uh, Philadelphia from Atlantic City under their Utica Avenue. Yeah, that's where folks could ch check the catch the train to New York or Philadelphia. And I thought I had a picture of, of a crowd with suitcases. Now I'm not sure what was going on here. It was quite a crowd. And yeah, I think they're just they're going to the city. Senior trip or something. I don't know. Something. Getting out of town. Westfield Power Plant. Scott Barnes, if you can un unmute yourself a second. Uh, sure. Uh, you left a comment about the uh, about how long they, the uh, Westfield Power Plant powered the uh, electricity for the area. Yes, yeah. yeah, so it was 1906 until 1924, I guess, when they switched over to commercial sources. Okay. Yeah, that's when they started buying the power from Philadelphia Electric. And they had a, a transmission line. They ran, followed this route that you're on now uh, from uh, Philadelphia over the Dallaire Bridge and all the way down into Westville with the power. Thank you, Scott. Westville, and you can see the... Uh, power plant behind behind here. That's so nineteen thirty eight. Railroads had some extensive buildings in these areas in this area. And then finally, 1962, you see the smokestack was down off the uh, building and the uh, power lines were up on the poles. Yeah, but that wasn't for that. The power lines were to bring the uh, high tension wires through town. That was a different operation. They come from uh, the power company in uh, Chester, cross the river and, and come up. Okay. Ron, where was this uh, building in relationship to the other ones? Yeah, well, right across the street. Okay. I forget, forget the name of the street, but where the brick station is, it looks out across the tracks. If you looked out the window across the tracks, you'd see that building. Okay. So that's on the east side. Wildwood Junction. Uh, well, another another uh, newer car here in the collection. Uh, trains to Wildwood on your left, and trains for Cape May. It's not in this picture on your on your right. The, uh, where the photographers, where Don was standing on the tracks was the Cape May branch. Uh, along with Rio Grande Station. Yeah, that's the one that they moved down to, uh, what's the name of that place? The amusement park down there. Gracie Sound, which is a train line into Wildwood. Uh, Gracie Sound Drawbridge into Wildwood. Jerry didn't put a date on this.
Wildwood Crest from Sweetbriar Road. He just had to walk down the end of the street for that. In the Oak Avenue station around 1965. Sixty-seven. Uh, back up to Williamstown, Williamstown Junction area. No, that, that's downtown Williamstown. That's not Williamstown Junction area. Drilling some freight around 1974. Winslow Junction. That's the Reddings Winslow Junction. The uh, one you know of today is uh, over to the left. Water Tower that used to be at Winslow Junction. Jersey Central. That's where the CNJ merged with the PRSL. Here's uh, Winslow Junction in 1968. Quite a quite a difference even there now. There's a tower that's still there, not used in the background. It's Atlantic City Line. Another uh, one of Wilt's pictures. Uh, just this come a couple years ago. This is the Southern Railroad of New Jersey's engine house, which is what is there now. Yeah, they had to move it. Yeah, we used to be over here and they actually picked the whole, realized the building was not on their property and they uh, picked the building up somehow and moved it to their property. Woodbine Junction prior to 1903. Nineteen forty one photo from Don Wenzel. That's why I said prior to nineteen, uh, whatever it was on the other one, because that's Woodbine Junction, and they chopped the top off, and then you can see where the steps ran up. At the Woodbury, the station is still here as a restaurant. See smoke coming out of the signal maintainer's shed. I took these pictures back in the uh, 80s on Route 45. Same, same, different shed, just uh, That was the last manned crossing in New Jersey, I believe. Station after they tore their second track out. Loading dock that used to be there in uh, now I think it's the Jewelry Parking Area. The 
station is just up out of sight here. What kind of a foggy day? Just took the shot of the signal. Woodbury Heights, a little further down uh, past Woodbury, you can see the uh, third rail was still there. This is 1941. Back to Woodcrest. So the little shelter was there now. It's a uh, good sized Patco station and parking lot. Woodstown. Nice looking building. That building was standing out in a farm field. A little later, uh, 1962. And that's the end when it'll send it with a uh, picture of a signal maintainer doing his job. But uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. For the non-chapter non people, if you're interested in our online store, membership books, our little magazines that we print every quarter of your memberships, it's uh, www.westjersey.com hyphen nrhs.org so uh, we'd be happy to have you visited and uh, but we're glad you stopped by to join us tonight and hope you enjoyed the hope you enjoyed the show